Um, I mean, just go out there and do the things you know I know I can do on the court. At the end of the day, um, you know I think I believe I'm a triple double threat every night. And that's what I'm gonna go out there and try to do. The problem if Lonzo Ball becomes mainly just a standstill shooter. That boy, the motherfucking got me. They trying to kill you, my boy, Lonzo. They trying to take you away from your position, Lonzo. Only thing is, what you gonna do about it? Now, if you didn't know, Lonzo Ball is currently my favorite player in the NBA off multiple reasons. I liked him at UCLA. He was the most exciting college player I've seen since John Wall. Then, I also like the Ball family. They are a very captivating group of people. I'm undefeated, never lost. Then, he got drafted to my Lakers. The Lakers are my favorite team, so you understand why he's my favorite player. But Lonzo got traded from my favorite team to the Pelicans with Brandon Ingram, who's my second favorite player. Basically, his his Pelicans career so far has been down, but also up. Basically, Lonzo had a bad first month and a half of basketball to the team. And I get that he's a new team, new coach, new teammates. But the spotlight is on Lonzo to play well, especially when he got traded for Anthony Davis. So he got benched in that time. Lonzo got benched for the first time he has ever got benched since he was seven years old, which is crazy. He picked it back up, especially when Drew Holiday got injured and Lonzo had some of the best basketball he's ever played. He scored 20 points per game in the four straight games. The first time he's ever done that in his career during that time. Um, even when Drew Holiday came back, even when Zion came back, even when Brandon Ingram came back. So he was doing all this, averaging 14, 8 and 8 as the fourth option on the team. That's that's crazy, bro. Like, that's Jason Kidd numbers. Imagine if he was the first option, the second option. And then when he was still scoring, he still had holes in his game. Lonzo still was a horrible finisher. I'm going to keep it a buck. Lonzo can't finish, especially at his frame, 6'6". Six, six. He's kind of stocky. He should be a way better finisher than he is now. He's quick off his first step. He should be able to dunk that motherfucker. Lonzo is really scoring off catch and shoot opportunities and basically long three pointers and transition. Now, it's not a bad thing, but we should recognize the shot profile of how he's scoring. It's not a lot of pick and roll, which he's bad at. It's not a lot in finishing, which he's bad at. It's not a lot in ISO, which he's bad at. Lonzo just took his spots, knew his abilities, knew his capabilities, knew his strengths and his weaknesses, and did what he had to do. Same thing he did in UCLA. Lonzo wasn't ISOing, pick and roll all day in UCLA. He was just shooting the shots that he's comfortable taking. And that's how Lonzo's played. We've never seen a player play like that in Lonzo, especially as point guard. Most point guards can score from all three levels. If not all three, they can score from inside the paint and the three-point line. Lonzo is different. Lonzo loves the three-point line, but he hates everything else. He's allergic to it. So in that sense of his playing style, people want to put him in a category of being a three and D. Stan Van Gundy talked about in his podcast that Lonzo Ball, based off his stats and based off his analytical stats, that he's a three and D guy. Because he can't run a pick and roll right. He can't finish. But he's a great catch and shoot player and he's good enough to guard one through four and that's basically what a 3 and d guy is but it's more to it than labeling him as a 3 and d guy lonzo can do all those things stan van gundy said but he also is a top five passer in the league who's who else is a good 3 and d passer andre Godala. and this has made it more known that he wants lonzo to play that off guard when he drafted kyra lewis now some pelican fans think this was the best player available which is true and the other ones think oh he replaced lonzo which that might be the case i don't know and if you know lonzo is up for a contract if he plays better than he did last year pre-covid he's gonna get a 20 million dollar contract and the pelicans don't want to pay him that and it made him more known when they traded drew holiday and i was like oh yeah lonzo's finally gonna take over the keys let's get it then they got eric bledsoe the worst version of drew holiday and that's disrespectful to drew holiday eric bledsoe is a 6-1 point guard not a good shooter as drew holiday even though eric bledsoe made first team all defense bro drew holiday is clamping shit up that that award don't mean nothing and also eric bledsoe is not a good catch and shoot guy so even if alonzo wanted to play the point guard role pastors love catch and shoot guys eric bledsoe is not gonna make that happen for you the pros and cons of lonzo being a 3 and d guy is he has a set role lonzo never really had a set role coming out of college he was point guard some days then some days he was he was a shooting guard then some days he was guarding three that was Luke Walton, dumbass, for doing that dumb shit. Then with Alvin Gentry, he played point guard a little bit. Then Drew Holiday took over reigns because David Griffin wanted him to be MVP because he said he's gonna be MVP candidate this season, which is not true. But you want to get your good, you want to give a guy who gave your organization eight years of suffering. You know what I'm saying? Some stats. Lonzo was also restricted to the two guard until Drew got injured, obviously. And then Lonzo took over as PG, but then it was up and down from there. Lonzo beat point guard some games. Ben Brennan 
Brandon Ingram would be point guard. It, 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 sometimes it makes no sense. So this will give him a new set role, but the con of this is I don't like this role for Lonzo. I don't think Lonzo liked this role for Lonzo, but if you know Lonzo, Lonzo will do anything to make the team win. He don't care about no stats. He don't care about nothing like that. But I think this year is different because after the bubble, Lonzo said, next year, check my stats because everybody was hating on him because he averaged four points a game in the bubble, which was bad. I think Lonzo actually is being a little selfish a bit. He wants to get some stats in. He wants to have the ball in his hands. And I love that. If you're a basketball player at the highest level, all basketball players across the whole league, all of them are cocky. If you make the NBA, you're cocky. Lonzo's the least uncockiest NBA player I've ever seen, mainly because he thought he was gonna get to the NBA his whole life. So it's just like, oh, it's, it's nothing. But Lonzo, you gotta be cocky, bro, if you wanna be good in this league. I don't care about no humbleness, all that. Your favorite players are not humble. Maybe to the media, but to their friends, bro, check my stats. Bro, look at my back account. They're not humble, and it's cool. So the con of it is Lonzo's not gonna have the stats he's gonna have because a 3 and D guy is limited to maybe double figures and everything else doesn't show up in the stat book, even his passing. And also you're putting Lonzo in the box and you know, if, if you watch Lonzo, if you put Lonzo in the corner or if you don't give Lonzo the ball, he his confidence goes from here to here. He doesn't be the same player as he was. He becomes timid, he becomes scared. So them 3 and D shots you think Lonzo is gonna take are gonna brick because he doesn't touch the ball. That's Lonzo's game, bro, he's hot and cold. That's why he's hard to root for and I love him so much because when he hot, that man doing step backs from half court. When he cold, that man is missing point blank layups. It's, it's really, it's crazy, bro. I don't know what happened to him in his childhood that made him like this, but it's crazy. So definition of a point guard, in my opinion, is a guy who controls the offense and makes everybody around him better. That's the premise. That's the foundation of a good point guard. Yes, point guard should know how to run a pick and roll. That's probably the main thing in today's NBA. A good pick and roll man fills up a lot of gaps that your team didn't have. Them set plays you have to run, you don't have to run them no more because a guy can run a pick and roll. He can manipulate the pick and roll. But Lonzo does the first part as well as any young point guard in the league. He makes everybody around him better. Go look at the stats with Brandon Ingram on the court with Lonzo and Zion Williamson on the court with Lonzo. He makes them better. He makes team morale go up because he's going to give everybody the ball. He's not going to stick to his hands like a Kyrie, like a Kemba Walker, like a Dane. Even though those players are very efficient and that style of play is key to winning sometimes, but sometimes you just want to just pass the ball to somebody, you know what I'm saying? Lonzo knows he's not a 25 point per game scorer, but he does know that he has two 25 points per game scorers on his team and Zion and Brandon Ingram. And he makes some players very happy with them dishes he does. You can't limit a top five passer in the league to a three and D row. Lonzo does have to work on his pick and roll because if Lonzo just a little bit aggressive off the pick and roll, bro, this host, we wouldn't be talking about this right now. They probably wouldn't have drafted Kyra Lewis and Eric Bledsoe wouldn't even be on his team. If Lonzo was just this much aggressive in the pick and roll and his finishing was way better. But the main people who's calling him a three and guy are these goddamn Pelican writers. I don't like beat writers. If you know what beat writers are, beat writers are team writers who, who talk about the team day to day, who interview the players. They all nice and stuff in public. Behind closed doors, behind on the little Twitter Twitter, they crucify these players. They want Lonzo to be a three and D guy. They're bashing them every chance they get. They're trying to force a narrative. A lot of people believe something, that thing is gonna come true. So I hope Stan is not looking at the media, I'm not looking at the analytics, talking about Lonzo is fitted for this because analytics don't tell the whole story. You have to watch the full games. And I think Stan Van does that to a degree because obviously he was a color commentator and he, he's very good with his stats. Go ask Zion if Lonzo was a PG or not. Go ask him. But Stan Van said Lonzo has a chance to prove himself in training camp. So training camp, if he's aggressive off the pick and roll, if he's attacking the rim with authority, making the layups, if he's shooting the three ball like he was during the season, Lonzo is primed to be that guy. 15, eight and eight with good defense. That is Jason Kidd right there. When Lonzo played good last year, they literally blew out teams because Lonzo is on defensively and offensively. They blew out teams easily, no matter who it was. The main reason they want to put Lonzo as a 3 and D guy as opposed to point guard is his bubble stats. Lonzo bubble was literally the worst basketball I've ever seen Lonzo play ever in his life. He couldn't shoot, he couldn't drive, he couldn't pass, he couldn't defend, he, he couldn't do nothing. It was horrible and it was bad and it was very embarrassing. Now granted it was bubble, it's, they coming off a deadly virus, no fans, and Florida locked down and basically 
a millionaire prison playing some random exhibition games just to get in a play-in tournament. It's a lot of factors that go into it, but it's no excuse. Basketball is basketball. After them eight games, most Pelican riders negated Lonzo's whole three-month dominance during the season. Y'all gonna really judge COVID basketball that heavily, bro? Jamal Murray turned into Michael Jordan. TJ Warren turned into Kawhi Leonard. I'm just saying. But that be all for this video, bro. This is an early video, bro. I'm going to my with my friend to pick up a dog. That nigga got some money. Him was gonna pick up a blue-eyed, black-eyed German Shepherd over here in another state. You know how niggas just want dogs all of a sudden. But um, yeah, I'm trying to get a PS5. I tried Walmart. I might just wait till like uh, January to get one because it's hard. It's hard out here for a pimp. Yeah, man. On the road for 2,000 subscribers. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, anything else you want to see from me. I'm out, man. Peace.